Marine Corps says the Pentagon should not get rid of its don't ask, don't tell policy. General James Conway had plenty of other things to say today in an exclusive interview with national security correspondent Jennifer Griffin. As the Justice Department moved to block a federal judge from overturning the controversial ban on gays openly serving in the military, the outgoing commandant of the Marine Corps, General James Conway, in an exclusive interview with Fox, says not only does he think gays should not be allowed to openly serve in the military, but most of his Marines feel the same way. They say that they are concerned that it will cause uh, potential problems with regard to good order and discipline. I think that the current system is functional and that, uh, that it also provides for a better unit cohesion and uh, less difficulty when it comes to disciplinary issues and especially so at a time when we're at war. He said informal polls he had done supports this view. What percentage are we talking about? What are the polls that you have well, done? 90, 95 percent of the Marines. But President uh, Obama has assured his supporters and voters that don't ask, don't tell will be overturned. This is not a question of whether the policy is in, uh, will end. This policy will end, and it will end on my watch. Conway added there is confusion among commanders about how to deal with such cases from today forward. I think initially uh, there is going to be an element of uncertainty on the part of the commander in terms of, okay, how do I handle cases if, if they exist uh, on, on his dockets. General Conway is only the second Marine Commandant to serve his full term during wartime. How are you doing today? He is outspoken, sometimes a renegade, and didn't always agree with the advice being given from the field about the way ahead in Iraq and Afghanistan. He often butted heads with General David Petraeus over the surge. Frankly, uh, uh, Dave Petraeus and I disagree a little bit on this. So we have said that the surge reinforced success that we were already having in the Anbar. Conway also disagrees with assessments that the current push to reconcile with the Taliban will end the war in Afghanistan. But I, I do not think that there will be an awakening type of event in Afghanistan simply because the tribal structure uh, is different. Uh, in Iraq, you had what we call a single belly button, a, a leading sheikh, if you will, that influenced thousands or maybe even tens of thousands of people. Uh, the Afghan tribal fabric is, is much more uh, disparate, I think, than that. He also does not think that the July 2011 deadline that the president announced when he sent 30,000 more troops to Afghanistan was helpful, nor does he think it will apply to his Marines. There's an expectation in some regards that it is a precipitous event. And in fact, I think it will be uh, hardly noticeable, uh, again, probably especially in the South. He says Pakistan is a friend, but also a threat. This Pakistan is a nuclear-armed uh, uh, country. Uh, and if you are concerned about the nexus of, of terrorism and nuclear weapons, as we all should be, Pakistan probably represents the closest danger in that, in that context. And Shannon, one day after we reported that the U.S. government had obtained intelligence suggesting that there was a threat to the U.S. homeland, we've now learned that the FBI is filing charges against an informant, Syed Omar Ali, who they say lied to them and was the source of this intelligence. Shannon? Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon. Jennifer, thank you.